can't find nothing on the radio. Ready, Steve? Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Welcome to Songology. He's Bruce. He's Richard. And this is another episode from our Song of the Day archives. Enjoy. Welcome back, Bruce. What do you have on tap for today? Today we're continuing our virtual field trip to Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and all of the great music that came out of there. If I recall correctly, we had got through Arthur Anderson and things getting started, and we got through Percy Sledge and the contributions that he made and so forth. And we made reference to the fact that the band up and left Fame Studios and were replaced by the musical group that became the Swampers. Well, around about then, and now this is in the middle to late 60s, Wilson Pickett was a up-and-coming recording artist for Atlantic Records. And he had recorded uh, some of his early stuff, particularly... Do you remember the Wilson Pickett song, In the Midnight Hour? Does that ring any bells? It does ring a bell. There you go. Well, that was recorded by Wilson Pickett at Stax Records up in Memphis. Now, there's a couple of different stories, either... Stax Records decided that they were all going to do in-house stuff, or Wilson Pickett offended someone at Stax Records, hard to say, which I've heard both stories. Either way, Wilson Pickett was not going to be recording at Stax anymore. And so it was around about this time, in part because of the success that Rick Hall had had producing uh, all these R&B acts, and Percy Sledge going to number one with When a Man Loved a Woman, that Jerry Wexler at Atlantic Records said, OK, I'm going to send Wilson Pickett down to Alabama to record. Now, although Wilson Pickett was from the South originally, he had sort of grown up in a more urban environment. And so he arrived at the local airport, a very small little airport, where he was met by Rick Hall. And Pickett was a little apprehensive about this because here he is going to rural Alabama. And yet we have to remember that this is rural Alabama in the late 60s, and Alabama was the site of that speech, segregation now, segregation forever kind of thing. If you remember all that from that period of time? Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, we were awfully young. But yeah, <laughs> other, yeah. Other people might remember it. And yeah, certainly yeah. We've, we've seen some of the stories in the documentaries, films, yes. about that sort of thing. So it was... You know, something of a, of a source of apprehension for a black artist to be going to rural Alabama to be recording some music. And, of course, Pickett had never really, he'd never been to Muscle Shoals. He never didn't know anything about any of it. And so here he is getting picked up by this big, tall, white guy in a cowboy hat at this little rural airport. And they're driving back in the direction of town. And as they're passing along, he sees, and he has a hard time believing what he's seeing, Yes, there really are people out picking cotton by hand. And he even said to Rick Hall at the time, is that what I think it is? Uh -huh. <laughs> because he's thinking, oh, goodness, what have I got myself into here? Yeah, yeah. So he gets into the studio, though, and, and very, very rapidly, a really great rapport developed between Rick Hall, the producer and owner of Fame Studios, and Wilson Pickett. And Pickett recorded quite a number of records there over the rest of his career. In fact, Rick Hall says that he regarded Wilson Pickett as one of his best friends. They just really got along well. Yeah. Well, the song that I decided to go with on this is the first real hit that he had from Muscle Shoals, and that is The Land of a Thousand Dances. Now, do you remember that one? No. Oh, there you go. Well, you can get out your dancing shoes for this one. This is a cover version. The original, it's a Chris Kenner was the guy who wrote it. He released it back in 1962, and it sort of draped onto the bottom of the charts. Basically, it's almost a listing of all the dances that were popular in the early 60s, like the mashed potato and the Watusi and all of those. Yeah. It's based on an old spiritual song called Children Go Where I Send Thee. And so the singer in that song lists all the places where he's going to send thee, right? Right. And so all Chris Kenner did was took the basic idea of that and some of the, the basic structure and listed dances for it. The song is actually also credited to our old friend Fats Domino, yeah. though he had absolutely nothing to do with writing it. Oh. It was a deal that he and Chris Kenner made. Kenner said, if you record this, I'll give you half the writing credit. So Domino said, sure. But his version flopped. Kenner's version, as I said, scraped onto the charts. 
at kind of the bottom end of the chart. So a couple of years later, it gets picked up by a Mexican-American band in Los Angeles called Cannibal and the Headhunters. A wonderful name. Good name. They recorded a version, and this was the first version of the song to include the part of the chorus. You'll forgive me for my rendition. The part that goes na 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 that part. Yeah. That was added by Cannibal and the Headhunters because when they were playing it in their live set early on, the singer forgot the words. <laughs> And so he's desperately flailing around, and the other members of the band knew that he didn't know the words. Yeah. And so they just started doing that little na 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 sort of thing over and over again until he sort of composed himself and got (laughs) got on with things. Uh Uh-huh. Now, Wilson Pickett actually, when Cannibal and the Headhunters recorded that song, they kept that part of the chorus in, and that part Wilson Pickett preserved as well. He dropped off Chris Kenner's spoken word introduction. But this was, say, the first song that that he recorded in Muscle Shoals, ended up being a number six hit for him and did got to number 22 in the UK back in 1966, and was something that really got the relationship between Fame Studios in, in Muscle Shoals and Atlantic Records rolling along quite well. So in this version, the Wilson Pickett version, he talks about Pony, the mashed potato, the alligator, the twist, the Watusi, and the jerk. Now, do you remember a single one of those? I know I sort the of... names, but if you were to put me on a dance floor and try to do one, not a chance. There you go. I don't think I could have done one either. I have... There's various videos of this sort of thing, people demonstrating them on YouTube, so they're pretty easy to find. Well, I know parts of the twist, actually, but I don't know if I know the whole thing. Yeah, well, the twist is relatively simple. Yeah. The mashed potato is a kind of a strange thing that you do on the balls of your feet, and you're sort of waving the, your heels back and forth, so your legs are twisting individually. It's kind of weird. In Kenner's version, in addition to all of those dances, he also referred to the yo-yo the sweet pea, the fly, the hand jive, the slop, the chicken, the bop, the fish, the slow twist, the tango, and something called the Popeye. Okay. I I have no idea what those are. Uh Uh-huh. But say it was the early 60s and everybody was coming up with new dances. Indeed. So who knows? Maybe if you listen to this enough times, you could learn to dance. (laughs) I kind of doubt that. Oh, come on, because it's really, really easy, because the basis of dancing is discounting, right? Uh And you know how to count. You just go. One, two, three. One, two, three. And as usual, I have to stop it right there due to the wonderful world of fair use rules. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. You can visit us on Facebook or head over to our website, songology.ca. Now, here's your chance to listen to the music or go on to the next episode.